Hello and welcome back to another review for today's video. We've got the original 16 foot tall colossal North Pole sign Santa. I bought this off a of marketplace for 125, which is a lot cheaper than what I paid for this last year. Got this on eBay for a nice round juicy three hundo. I always wanted the original version and I have the 2013, but very much wanted to track down the 2011 and I've done that on marketplace. I saw this little thing right here and I knew I had to have it. The seller agreed to ship and she was going to ship in this box. The box is horrendous enough. I can only imagine if she shipped it in only that, but she did put a cardboard box around it. I don't know really how much protecting it did, but it definitely did some. Moving down here, you will find the comparison, of course, and then a little bit lower, Jimmy 2011 right there. So this is the original. I believe it sold at Lowe's, though I find it odd. There is no item number there at all. I didn't buy this for the inflatable itself. It's in certainly pre-owned condition, but this was what I was after mainly. This little thing right here and then just this poster. I'm hoping to extract it from the box. I know it will be extremely difficult as not only is it stuck on there, but you do have a bunch of tape around it and it might be an impossible task, but we'll see. We'll see what I can do. I find it pretty funny that I now am an owner of two of these. I hope that the condition is at least pretty good so that I can either A, sell it or just, you know, keep this as a backup for the one I already have. This definitely will not be in better condition, but it's at least nice to have, no doubt. The back of the box is much more faded. You can tell right there, especially and then just around it, it's either darker, or, you know, the colors just are not as bright. That green is certainly dull. The box is really nothing to look at. I just wanted to give you a high resolution look at the original version of the 16 foot North Pole sign Santa as it is many people's favorites, not just my own, but a lot of you guys out there have a special place for this guy. So with that, we'll go ahead and at least attempt to open it up. I've got it spread out. looks a little bit like a crime scene. Now I'm very impressed with the coloring on it. Not much appears to be faded. Once it's inflated, it'll become a little bit more apparent on what is or what's not losing its coloring. For now, I am liking the looks of things though. The unboxing experience, I kind of had to cut. The top of the box just looks that bad. Now, as far as fabric goes, it feels very crunchy still. So I don't think we're going to have a thinning issue with this. We'll see what we get. Hopefully it's going to be really good. I, I do like the way this is panning out. For 125, I'm liking the price I paid much more than what I paid last year. Anyway, we'll go ahead and see what we have. While I may have been a bit premature in the fading aspect of it, it does look really good. It also inflates kind of like my 2013 one. This is truly the granddaddy of all colossal air balloon inflatables. The one that started it all back in 2011, this one was number one, top of the charts. Today, it is maybe top 10. It might not even be top 10 anymore. So it's kind of crazy how far Jimmy has come since then in good ways and bad. In terms of size, I think they've really pushed themselves and that's great to see. This one though was the inaugural Colossal Air Balloon Inflatable and should certainly be remembered as that. Thankfully on a non-windy day, even at this scale, I can get away with just staking the ground tether attachments. It's got four, all of them I have staked. No tethers are being used at this time. Looking at the rest of it, I would say the main fading is up by his head. Everywhere else, even like the body looks pretty good. You've got your North Pole sign there, of course. And then if you want to look here, this is probably where it inflates the weakest, but it makes sense because you don't get a lot of air, you know, coming through there. It's got to go, it's got to pass a lot of things to get to the end of the sign or the handle, uh, but it still inflates, you know, relatively well, better than most cheap fans even. Taking a look at the bottom with it being all black, the dirt will show up right there. When it's in the sun, the camera won't really pick up on it, but that is where it does have some scuff marks. Even with the YF200, it doesn't inflate the best. Could use some more air intake. I think the reason for it is not the fan. The fan is great, and it has nothing to do with it being external either. It's the fact that it has two air pockets. I don't really know why Jimmy thought it needed two. Evidently, they did. I think it could easily get away with one, but this one does have two air pockets, which doesn't affect it much. I just feel like, you know, it's not really necessary. Took a look at the lighting situation inside and it's pretty terrible. Five or six burned out, a couple shells either cracked or missing. So the illumination will need a little bit of rework for sure. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it for now. I'll just keep it in my climate controlled storage unit and hold on to it for as long as I wish. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out, bye.